Hello, so today we're looking at the Kantige Oracle, an ecological spiritual guide and creative prompt deck written by Ray Diamond, art by Laura Zuspin. It's a 52 based, 52 card nature based deck. Um, Kantige is a song the earth sings, so that's the name where it comes from. It means like earth song. It's grounded in nature based archetypes and it's a self practice deck. So this is the guidebook. It is the biggest guidebook I have ever had. Like it is a novel. It is substantial and it's good quality. It's got green typing. Um, some people might have issue with reading it. I'm absolutely fine. So it's how it's got its name, the history, the philosophies behind it. It's got quite a lot of information. The inspirations, which they list as Buddhism, Taoism, yoga, animism, the arts and science. And how to use this book. So there's different ways. They have a yearly practice where you start with the first card, the dark solstice sun, on the day of winter solstice, and a week later transition to the second card. So they've got a whole like guide here on how to do that. Um, they've got, so it goes further into it, talking about the deck, how to take care of your deck, how to ask the right questions, how to draw cards, how to care for it. Then they've got spreads, so they've got quite a lot of spreads. This is Bridge Earth Sky, so here's some spreads. And then they talk about a bioregion map, how to create a bioregion, and spreads for that one, weather patterns as well, lunar context with the associated spreads. I don't know what that sound is, guys. Sorry about that. Um, Taoist elements, Western elements. There's a lot of information, how to use it as the yearly cycle. So it lays it all out for you. And then you go to the cards. So you've got the name of the card, um, the archetype that it is about that, keynotes, symbology, guidance, as an icon, as a portal, a practice, creative prompt, and ecological connection. So there's one, two, three, four, at least four pages of information on every card. So like I said, this is full on. You can really use this as a study deck. And at the end, there's a gratitude um, and there's also resources. I love it when there's resources if you want further reading. So that is the guidebook. So these are the cards. So these are the backs of the cards. I matched my nails to it. Um, they've got sort of a webbing that's not really foiled, but it does shimmer. The cardstock itself is glossy and it's quite thin. So I'm not sure how these would hold up, but we'll have to wait and see. So let's look at the cards.
Okay, sorry about the cats, guys. They just can't help themselves. So we have the luminous brew. In a cauldron made of moss, hung over a fire that feeds itself on nothing fuel, these things simmer under the light of the moon. A star-kissed star leaf, pollen gathered by a swarm of bees between hives, lichen from the apex of a mountain, moistened with a single drop of cave water fallen from a crystalline stalactite, a wish you cannot know until it is fulfilled. You drink this brew from a green acorn cap as ribbons of dawn pink the bows. Keynotes. Your current experiences will later feed your future self. In the meantime, let your past nourish you. Symbology. The strange and unforeseen adventures, synchronicities and encounters that unfurl as you attempt the various feats of your life simmer within you. These experiences combined form an elixir that nourishes and sustains you as further misadventures, switchbacks and tragic comedies unfold throughout your life. Guidance. This is a time traveling archetype. Going back in time. When you're drawn to this archetype, you will now benefit from letting your past experiences nourish you. In particular, notice if there are any themes in your current experience that feel like a repetition or evolution of a prior experience. Apply the lessons of the past to your current situation and build on those lessons for the future. If you're currently in a very dark time, take a mini vacation in your mind. Recall a time and place where and when you felt safe and at ease. Let the memory become vivid, engaging all of your senses in the experience, the colors, scents, sounds, and sensations of this place and time. Tune into how your body feels when you recall this experience. Drink this place time in like a broth that nourishes you all the way into your marrow, stepping into the future. In addition to reconsidering the past, you also benefit now from fast forwarding yourself to a point in the future. When your current situation has resolved, how does your future self feel about your current experience? How might your future self turn today's lead into tomorrow's gold? How might your future self delight in the fleeting joys of this moment? Even if you can't answer these questions specifically quite yet, the practice of imagining yourself beyond your current difficulties and exhilarations is an excellent affirmation in the impermanence of these circumstances. Trust that one way or another, you'll make good use of the challenges and gifts you are now facing. As an icon, let this image remind you of past experiences that can inspire and inform your current situation. Use this image to capture the essence of this time for future use. As a portal, let these inquiries open you to receiving the gifts of this archetype. What if everything you have thus far experienced gives you the very nourishment you need to resolve your current difficulties? What if everything you're experiencing now will one day give you the nourishment you most need? Practice. Create and drink a luminous brew. On a full moon night, make a lunar infusion by combining boiling water and herbs, quarter cup dry or half cup fresh leaf and flour, half that amount of using roots and berries, of your choosing in a quart jar. Soak the herbs overnight in a spot where they'll catch the light of the full moon. Write a word or phrase that describes a feeling mood you wish to cultivate on a piece of paper and place it face up beneath the jar. Strain and drink your brew in the morning. Creative prompt. Create a piece of work that expresses poison as elixir. Extract elements from past work and create a new work that brews these various pieces together into new potions. Create fragments of work that express various essences of your current experience. Resolve to weave them together into a new work at a future date. If you like, you can place them in a jar in your creative space where they will simmer until the time is right to use them. Ecological connection. Learn about the natural history of where you live so you can understand the luminous brew of where you are. Before there were roads and buildings, what was the land like where you are? Was it formerly a swamp? Were any hills flattened or mudflats filled with topsoil? If there was an indigenous population in your area, how do these folks live in relationship with the land? How does this knowledge shape, inspire and nourish your relationship with where you are? Does this understanding inspire you to make changes in how you live upon and relate with your place on earth and with any indigenous people who may still be in the area? So that is the Kentucky Oracle by Ray Diamond and Laura Zussman. I hope you're having a stunning morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are. And as always, stay wild, star child.